Um, Not a chance, by the way. I wish we could get rid yeah, of yeah. it. Not a chance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there's been a lot of talk about Mo and the Olympics again. I just wonder, has any decision been made? Because the noises coming out of Egypt seem to be that it'll be up to yourself and Mo whether he goes or not. Yeah. Um, no, no decision. No decision. We need, um, like always, if it, so it's clear. Do I want to lose a player in the, in the, in the, in the pre-season? Of course not. That's clear. But we have to uh, consider different different things. And um, I'm, I'm speak with Mo and all that stuff. We are completely um, clear about what we want. But um, but we need more information. So what? How would it look? When would the preparation start? And all that stuff. And nobody really contacted us so far. So it's just in a, in, a, in the media. So, um, and how you know, I it's difficult to get in contact with me. Um, to using newspapers or whatever because most of the things I don't read but I'm obviously Matt informs me then um, so um, no decision made yet but um, we'll see Is your first instincts though a flat no to it because you look at stats and we know the importance of Mo but 24 winning goals in the Premier League since you signed him that's six more than any other player it sums up his importance to this group of players doesn't it? Yes of course, that, that's that's clear. But we played, we had to play already without Mo. Not all, too often, thank God. But from time to time, we have to, and we will have. So that's how it is. That's not about that. I think um, I, all the positive things I could say about Mo, I said in different press conferences or interviews or whatever. So that that's all clear. But come on, it's Olympia, it's Olympic Games, and I'm I was at least I'm still a sports person, so and I was a sport by myself. So Olympic is Olympia is Olympia, so we, we have to see how we can deal with it. It's not really, not even we, we cannot discuss it really because we don't know anything about it, and we um, or not a lot about it actually. Um, but we heard about the things they said in the, or the manager of the the, the Olympic team, what he said, but yeah. We have to get in contact, or they have to contact us, and then we will see. For yourself, it's a bit of an extreme position that you're in the title race, given the advantages that you have. But I just wonder how your experience in Bundesliga title races has helped you in the Premier League. Obviously, you've been involved in a title race this season and last season as well. Or is there a big difference between the two that you could maybe explain to us? I have no clue how it felt in the past, to be honest. So in, in, in Dortmund or whatever, it was... Exciting, surprising, um, intense. People ask silly questions. <laughs> yeah, the answer. So that I can can compare. You are not different to the Germans, so they can tell you that. Um, what happens when I do it three times? Right? <laughs> Striking you out. Right, okay. Um, so no, I have no idea. So yes, we, it is clear. If you want to be successful, you have to be consistent. If you are consistent in a in a good way, um, then you have the chance to win something. But um, that's it. That's what we always wanted. Um, and so far, there's nothing decided. So the only it's actually the nicest problem you can have in football to answer or not answer these kind of questions. But it's still not possible, really. Uh, we cannot say what you think we should say because we don't think it. Um, and there are a lot of games to come, and we are we're sitting here and have a press conference before the Norwich game. Question number two or three, Norwich not even got mentioned. So that's a little bit my, not my problem, but Norwich is obviously my first concern. So we prepare ourselves since Monday for this game, didn't speak about anything else, and um, that's exactly what we do, and what happens then. We have no other chance than to make this game the most imp the most important game of our lives and um, play it on Saturday. Try with all we have to win it. People think it will be easy because they don't really think about it. They only watch the table, and we know about the problems we can have, but we know about the problems we can cause them as well. And so that's what we did the whole week. Thank you. Yeah, can everybody just back from the mid-season break? So. With Norwich City next in the Premier League, <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you. How is how is everybody feeling? Is, is it, are they notably refreshed from that, or will we only find out over the next couple of months or so? The so of course the the the, the, the impact that that's it's a bit pity that we have to explain the the, the necessity and all the, the 
how useful uh, a, a week break is. And it was not more than a week. Some teams had less, uh, but I think a week was the longest. Some teams used it for a warm weather camp, stuff like this. Um, and um, we sent the players all over the world. We wanted, to, we wanted them really to rest. And then we have, now we have a week. Yes, I can see a difference in training. But it's not about seeing a difference in a Norwich game or whatever. It's about, about really using this time, which is rest is only one word, it's recovery, it's recharging. There are a lot of things, starting with RE, which um, happen in that week. And um, that's, the, that's why we, that's why we f wanted it, that's why we fought for it, that uh, we made some decisions around it, and um, now the boys are back and um, we train completely normal. You don't lose a lot in a week, but you, um, you can gain a lot, and um, that's why it's so important. But how I said, it's not a, that this specific thing is not about a Norwich game. That's about the rest of the season, and we will see. It's Valentine's Day today. A lot of love around Melwood, as always. Uh, this game will be the 250th since you arrived at Liverpool as well. So I'm just wondering. In all competitions, or what? Or in what? all competitions. So I'm just wondering. Over those 250, which one, if any, did you love the most? <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> the Champions League final, eh? yeah. Yeah, it ended in the most beautiful way. Uh, we can a little bit discuss about the game, but the result was sensational. So, um, yeah, uh, that was the game I will so far and will never forget. I have a lot of games which I will never forget, unfortunately, because uh, the only thing I really think about is football. So, but yes. Easy. That's the only. No, the, the first final we won. Hopefully not the last, but it was the first, and it's always really nice. Jurgen, yeah, Andy Robertson's been talking this week about uh, the occasions this season that he's had to play through the pain barrier, yeah. and it wouldn't be only him, I'm sure. But it, it, in what ways does that sort of indicate the the sort of power and and the willingness of players to go the extra mile, and maybe also the fact that it, they know. That if they come out of uh, out of the, the team because they're injured, that there's every likelihood that, that when they're fit again, that, that they won't get back in. Look, there are so many positive stories about us at the moment, which is normal. There's another part of it. One hundred percent. I was a player myself. I played. When I look look back, it feels like I played eighty percent of the time through pain. Nobody appreciated that because I was played still bad. So that that, that didn't help. Nobody asked then. Um, it's completely normal for a professional football player that you have to play through pain. That's how it is. In our, the, I think I said it last year. Whenever when I think when Hendo got the knock in the Barcelona game and um, in the home game, and it looked really uh, could be uh, maybe not possible to to carry on. Half, in a half time, I looked at him and he said, "It's only pain." So that's exactly that's these are the words we use most most of the time. So it's only pain, it's not an injury, but it's still pain, and distracts you and disturbs you and and all that stuff. So um, yeah, I know for Rob it was very important because it was his left foot, which is <laughs> the only useful foot actually for him, and um, mm -hmm. um, and that's the. But now it's much better. That's good for but, but how that after that long period after December January, there was no player in the squad who had. Not pain, not any pain somewhere. So there was everybody had something. Yeah, but for Robert, it's true. It was um, very important that we had this week because it lo he looks different now. When you played Norwich first game of the season at Anfield, a four-one victory for Liverpool. But Norwich created plenty of opportunities. In some ways, are you surprised to see where they are this season on the basis of that performance? And you look at the. The early goal-scoring form of of, of Pukki and, and and you've got you know Todd Cantwell and and Buendia. They've got creativity. Is that a surprise to you? It's a surprise. I'm not sure this league is so strong that things like this can happen. What I really admire is that they stick to their principles, that they do what they do. And and this game against us is a very good example, I think, for the whole Norwich City season. Really good football, super coaching. Just you can see all the patterns on the pitch. You can see all the movements. That's from the training ground. What they do, very confident, um, conceding four in the first half, but not giving up. For example, in that game, we, they scored and they had more chances and stuff like this. Yes, we could have scored more as well. Um, but this is a good example for the season. So they 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 caused 
95% of all the teams they played against real problems. At the end, they lost a lot of these games. That's why they are in the situation they are. Um, but I, for me, it, it looks from outside that this club really um, sticks together. That they really that they know what their position is. They know what they what they have to do. And I think they they are in a, as strange as it may sound in a really good situation, in a, in a good moment in the club. Yes, you want to stay in the Premier League, that's still possible, difficult but possible. But even if not, you can see the transfers they made um, in the in now the winter. They're all like already the perspective for next season, wherever it will be, they will have a strong side again. Nobody questions Daniel Farke for <laughs> super reasons, because he's doing an incredible job. So there could be some consistency in which was maybe a little bit of problem in the last few years with Norwich, I'm not sure. So that's very important. And I, I was in a in a similar club in, in at Mainz, so which is we, we played good football, but we couldn't stay in the league at one point, and we were, we, we um, need a bit to come back, but it's possible and all that stuff. So you need a plan for tomorrow and you need a plan for next month and then you need a plan for the next few next few years and for me it looks like they have that and um, so I have, have a lot of respect but again we scored four they scored one that's one of the problems what they had and um, but they had much more chances in that game and um, that's what we have to think about so it was a really good warning and a good start in the season for us it was early we were not that consistent that time um, Finished the game maybe too early. This game spins when you are four, I think it was four nil up half time. Or did they score before half time? Four nil. So and that's a, a tr tr tricky situation. Can lead you on the wrong path. Not one hundred percent fit yet, and all that stuff. Players not as long together as, as necessary, and so we had to fight a little bit more in the second half. But that's completely okay. Now both teams are in a different uh, in a different situation, and um, we will feel the quality of Norwich, but we have to make sure that they will feel our quality as well. Um, I was just going to ask, given the um, intensity of the, the team on this fantastic run in the Premier League, do you think it will be easy for them to switch focus back to the Champions League with that coming up again? It don't really make a big difference, to be honest. Sometimes when you are not in a, such a good moment in the league, it's Champions League can be something like a kind of holiday, like you, the pressure is away, stuff like this. Now, don't, not a lot of expectation things. We are not in that situation, so we know that we have uh, one of the most difficult to play opponents in, in world football with Atletico Madrid. They, um, yes, some injury problems, obviously, kind of sorted, but these are the things. So no, I don't expect any problems. But I said it's not my problem in the moment. We have after that Sunday and Monday to make sure we. We will be in a Champions League mood if you want, um, and yeah. But I uh, think about that from Sunday on. Chris, anything new? Yeah, James Miller and Sadio Mane back in training <coughs> this week. Are they in contention for this one, or they need a little bit more time? Yeah, of course they're in contention. It's clear. So when Mili and Sadio are back, you, you you start thinking immediately. So that's how it is. But um, it looks like, and I hope it stays like this. Apart from uh, Shakiri, Klein, and Glatzel are all players in training, so we have uh, we have some good options, and we have hopefully it stays like this. That will be really great for that very house at the decisive part of the season now. Um, yeah, but it's good news. They train both from Monday on, so all good. and they train both through the last week anyway. Um, so they are uh, yeah in contention. Just, sorry, yes, sir. just want to ask as well, this is the first time we've had a chance to speak to you since the FA Cup game last week. How proud are you about how that unfolded and everyone involved against Shrewsbury last week? Absolutely great. Really happy um, for the boys. Spoke to them now, obviously, and uh, it's, they all enjoyed it like crazy. They loved it. Uh, it was absolutely sensational what our crowd made of this game. Um, sold out stadium. Um, creating that atmosphere just shows what a wonderful club we are, and um, yes, I loved it. It was, was really great. Um, I expected us to play a good game, to be honest, um, and the boys did. And we wanted the goal was a bit strange, maybe, but um, if there was a team who deserved to win in that game, it was us, and um, so that was really cool. Sensational job by all the boys and Critch, of course. Well, 
Um, you said earlier about players don't lose anything in the, in the break, they can kind of gain things. But I'm just wondering, you've been playing three games a week, you know, from the start of the season, how do you get that game intensity, that rhythm back after, after I mean, two oh, weeks without it? With training. So, look, the, the, the dream of a manager is you have a full week to prepare a game. So, you have a lot of, in, then you have intensity in training session, which you usually cannot have. Usually, the most intense session is the game in a, in, in a, in a tr training week. If you play Saturday, Wednesday, Sunday, or su Saturday again, the three games are the only intense sessions you have, really. The other, the, all the rest is tactical stuff, which is very important, but never intense, uh, or never highest intensity. And um, so that's now exactly the other way around. So we used that week, we trained hard, we trained a lot. How I said, the boys, what you lose, not really lose, but you have to find rhythm back, not not the rhythm for between the games, just your your own rhythm for for playing football. But that was always always done on Monday uh, when we started, uh, so that was done then. And since then, the quality was really good in training. That's um, how I want to do have it. Look, when you are always playing and playing and playing and playing, it's not that we don't enjoy it. No, we enjoy it a lot. But uh, do something else for one week in the middle of a season is is just is just nice coming back and you're looking forward to the next game like. You didn't play for the last half year, and um, so that's that's really really nice, and um, hopefully we can see that tomorrow. And on a, on a wider point, on, on the break, you you made a big point of, of respecting the Premier League break uh, with your decision with the FA Cup. I'm just wondering how you feel about the fact that the Premier League have scheduled the game, Premier League game, in two clubs scheduled break in terms of the Man City West Ham game. It just shows the. Um, the problem with the schedule, so that's how it is. Um, they could have, uh, yeah, the wind, the weather, you, nobody can change. Um, for us, it was never a standpoint against the FA Cup or whatever. I know people probably misunderstand it, but it had nothing to do with that. It was just to make sure that as we decided the winter break, there must be a winter break. Um, I can imagine it's, um, it's, it was really difficult organization wise for, for City and West Ham now to, to do that because. I'm pretty sure the players would have been somewhere else. So there may be instead of five, six, seven days, there are now three, four days, stuff like this. And people always discuss that, like, yeah, they earn a lot and they have to be there all the time. It's true, but we have to be at 100,000% in these moments. So um, I just hope that um, somebody will find a solution to to sort these kind of things. It's um, We had... I think the next problem what could come up if his city goes through an FA Cup and um, and all that stuff, then other games have to be rescheduled and and, and all this kind of thing. So uh, I said in our first year, nobody had a, nobody could tell me a solution if we go through against West Ham. Um, then we would have played probably Saturday, Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday or something like this. That that's how it is. That just you cannot please everybody at the end to to. Just we have to play games and stuff like that. We have to think a little bit more about it. That's what we try to enforce, or, or yeah, is it enforce? Try to help um, that we just discuss about these things. Because I mean, if you don't discuss about them, then the things get worse and worse and worse. And that should not, for sure, should not happen. We all love the Premier League. We all love to have a cup and the league and all that stuff. All the games, Champions League, all the games we play. We just have to make sure that in between is time for. At least a little nap um, or something, and um, then we go again. Welcome.